All right, we are recording. I'm recording on my computer, and I'll upload this to my Noble uh, YouTube channel so we can share the link out that way uh, for anyone who wants to either refer back to this or share it with other folks. Um, and I realized today that I have a bad habit of trying to pack too much into too little time. I don't know if you can relate to that. So my thinking is, well, because I don't want to rush through things, I want to be able to stop for questions. So if we don't make it through all of the slides, we'll just stop at the end when you know when it's time to stop or when you flag me down to say oh my god my brain is full please stop um and i'll just record the rest like offline and and then you can watch the other part of it um at your convenience so that's my plan um let me just Oh, we've got four of them. So I, this is, uh, that's Cece. She's not supposed to be on the table. Um, and then there's, <laughs> you might see Dash, who looks like her, Salem, our black cat, of course, and Archie, who's our gray cat. So you, you may see any of them. Um, all right, so let me just do a little bit of sharing. Um, one of the downsides of Google Meets is it's a bit hard to keep tabs on the chat. So I'm gonna do my best to check it. Um, and while I'm sharing these slides for the moment anyway, um, I'm not going to see all your faces. So if you wanna unmute yourself to say something, please do. Do, do, do. All right. So just a fun, little bit welcome to the google workspace training um my other non-library job is is working as a google workspace enterprise admin and i help a nonprofit in vermont use google workspace uh more effectively basically that's why they brought me on they said we're bad at this please help and that's what we've been doing for the last 18 months is figuring out how to use these tools more effectively as an organization. And it's been really quite fun. Um, no, not yet. <laughs> um, so the training objectives, you know, to throw back to a library school, always list your training objectives. I'm hoping to just provide an introductory demo of a selection of Google Workspace apps and some of the hidden features that you may or may not know about. Um, I'm gonna give some examples of how uh, like individual employees and organizational workflows have changed at the organization I work at to help with adopting these apps and features. And I'll share some lessons learned as well as some support resources so you can refer um, to them and hopefully get more out of your, your Google world. So that's what I'm hoping to do today. And this is the topic flow. Um, and I'm mainly going to be screen sharing and like, demoing where these features are. So if I likely won't have the slide deck up for perhaps the rest of the presentation. So you're welcome to refer to it if you wanna follow along. Um, and I'm going to do my best to remember to pause at the end of each topic just to see if there's any questions. Um, so if you do have a question, as we're going through something, if you could just write it down for me and then wait to ask at the end, because my um my brain will get a little slightly derailed um, otherwise, because that's how my brain works, unfortunately. So any questions so far? All right, cool beans. Well, I can't actually see you, so I'm not sure if anyone's raising their hand. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, 
All right, so I kind of switched things around a little bit because I realized that like support resources are probably some of the most important parts of this. So I was like, why don't we just put that at the very beginning? And that way, you know, people will know right away a few different things that you can do to get help with any Google app. So I'm gonna click over here so you can see my Gmail. So when I'm referring to Google Apps, I mean any of these kind of buttons in this menu in the right, those are each like standalone apps. And then certain of these apps have different components to them and we're gonna go through some of them. But that's what I mean by apps. So anytime you're in a different app, just if, and some of the stuff I'm sure you already know. So if I repeat something you already know, you know, it happens, you know, you're all very knowledgeable. Um, but in any app that you're in, any time you see this circle and question mark, these will link you to in-app help resources related to the app that you're in. Um, so just be aware that that is always available to you if you're getting hung up on something or you can't figure out um, a tool. Or you can click on this training link and that takes you to the more in-depth training articles on each app that you might be in. So this is Gmail. If I click over to my calendar app, the same thing is in my calendar app. If I click over to my Drive, the same thing is in Drive. So you can find that across the apps, which is really nice. Um, and that link, the second one went to is the Google Workspace Learning Help Center. They have excellent resources um, as an organization. And then the other thing that I really, really like, and I'll put this link into the chat, is the Google Updates blog. So you can sign up to receive uh, periodic updates from them. Sometimes they're daily, sometimes they're weekly. And that that's where they announce where a new feature is rolling out and what the timeline is to expect it to be available. It's really um, pretty handy dandy. Um, any questions so far about different support things where you can help yourself to Google stuff? Okay, let's get into the super fun things. Um, okay, I'm going to do my best to not click super fast through things. Um, so please speak up if, if you're like, do that again, you know, or not so fast, Carrie. Like, just I'm open to that kind of feedback here. So what I want to start with is showing some favorite integrations between Google Calendar and Google Meet. Um, so if, so I know that we have an infinite loop of us right now and I apologize for that, it's kind of wonky. But one of my favorite things about Google Meets is once you've joined the meeting, if you go to the circle with the eye in the bottom right hand corner to click on the meeting details, it will pull in the description I added to my Google Calendar event and it will also pull the attachments I added to the Google Calendar event. So that makes it really handy when you're collaborating on something in a meeting and like it just makes your documents super available. So this is our our calendar event for right now, and hopefully I don't do anything crazy, like d delete it accidentally while we're in here. But this is those meeting, the uh, details I added. And then when I make events, oh, this little thing, let's move this, 
over here now. Okay, so you can add any attachments to Google Meets Meetings with the paperclip. Um, and generally, I use Google Docs, so I would attach from there, but you can also upload from your computer um, and even access documents other people have shared with you, which is pretty handy. Uh, one of the neato things that I learned over time at my other job was when we had a group meeting um, and someone was sick, but the sick person was the one who made the calendar event. And then all of a sudden we couldn't edit the calendar event to reschedule it or access the documents they attached. And it was kind of like a wah wah moment. But from that, we learned a couple of different things. Um, one is that if it makes sense to, like if it's an internal group team meeting or something, you can click this box to allow guests to modify your event so they can change the date and time, add documents, things like that. That's super handy. Um, the other thing that you can do, like if you have that, you know, you're ill, but you're the person who made the meeting on their calendar, you can actually change who owns the meeting. So you can put in someone else and then they can have the full permissions access to, to deal with the meeting. So that's just kind of a handy dandy little thing. Um, that we learned over time. And another little tidbit, and again, these are just little tips and tricks that they're like some of my favorite little features that I didn't even realize were there. Um, this is one I really love. You can add a note, like if I'm running late, I can add a note. And then it shows up in the calendar event here. So if other people are waiting to start a meeting, but they see, oh, Carrie's, you know, running 10 minutes late, let's just start and she'll catch up. It's just a really nice time saver um, that we've noticed uh, over time. So let's see here. Yeah, yeah. So no, but what I'll, I'm going to talk a little bit now about creating like team calendars, and that's kind of a workaround for that issue. Um, because unfortunately, you can't have more owners, you can also kind of get around that by giving guests the permission to modify the event, but in circum certain circumstances, you, you may not want that at all. Because <laughs> someone, right, yeah, exactly. And you can't pick and choose, unfortunately. Um, so I'll touch on team calendars and I'm, I'm gonna share my screen. So this is my, my other Google Workspace account for my job. And what we did at that organization was um, kind of went team by team and were and asked the question like, does this team need a shared calendar, yes or no? And if it did, we would create shared calendars. Um, so some of our shared calendars, we have an all staff calendar where we create calendar events for our weekly staff meetings or any events uh, like staff retreats or kind of all hands on deck events. Um, we have, uh, some of our after school programs have their own calendars where they post their staff schedules for each day. One of our programs, this orange RTU calendar, that one is a calendar shared with like 30 volunteers and the volunteers populate it with the events they're running, uh, which is pretty neat. Yep. Oh. The window? Oh, sure is, you guys. Who did that? Let me share. <laughs> you might want to see what I'm looking at. That would probably be helpful. Let's try this. I apologize. Thank you for, for flagging me down with that. Can, 
Can you see what looks like a Google Calendar with purple, green, and yellow? Excellent. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So we created these different calendars for different teams, obviously, and each team determines what is the most effective use of the calendar for them. And this gray Google Workspace calendar, that's a part of, you know, my project area. So what we did with these team calendars is we added all of the staff members to it and gave people, we started by giving people full edit access to each calendar, and then they could choose if they wanted to take lesser permissions. Um, so that's sort of the way you can get around that, you know, having multiple people as owners of events. Um, one opportunity that we did miss as an organization because we didn't realize it was something that we could do was um, instead of adding 15 people and having the potential of leaving someone out or whatever we could have used um, we have like a whole staff google group similar to the beverly staff at and the um, bev ref at um, we could have just added our whole staff Google group email to the calendar at the appropriate permissions level, and then it would have pulled everyone just from that one email. So that was kind of something we wish we had known at the time, um, but now we know. So let me stop sharing for a minute here. Um, so some of the workflows that changed for individuals related to kind of pairing these two apps was remembering to attach any relevant files to the meeting to the Google Calendar event, um, adding those event details so it would show up in the, the meeting details icon in the Google Meets. And then if you are sick having the foresight of being like, I'm not feeling well, I better change ownership of these, you know, these meetings tomorrow, which has fallen through the cracks a lot for us. So that's hard to remember that. And then as an organization, um, we've gotten into the habit of using those Google group email addresses um, to make sure everyone's getting invited and we're not accidentally leaving anyone out. Um, and then making sure the appropriate people can edit a calendar event um, in the event someone's absence or absent. Anyway, any questions about those little tidbits? Yeah. Mm. So I did not include Google Groups in <laughs> this training. And as I say that, I'm like, that would have been a really good opportunity. So I can add that to um, like a separate little video, but just as like a quick crash course, you go to your apps menu, you go to groups, and then you can create your group here. So you would designate what the email address was, you know, what the purpose of the group, the name of the group. And then you can add people as members or managers or owners. Um, and there's, there's too many settings to go through. Was I not sharing my screen again? I wasn't sharing my screen again, you guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's been a while since I've done an online training. I don't know if you could tell. Um, okay, so you go to the app menu and you go to Google Groups and then you go to Create Groups. And this is where you decide what the email address is. Um, and then you name it and you can add people as members, owners, managers, stuff like, whoops, stuff like that. But it's, there's a lot of settings to, to go through. All right, I will move on to the next bit here. So I'm gonna talk about 
Google Tasks, which is my absolute favorite feature um, that comes with Google. So you'll hard agree. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I vehemently agree with you. Um, so you'll notice on the right hand edge of, um, and you can all see my, my Gmail window right now. I'm gonna have to start asking that to make sure I'm sharing right. So on the right hand edge, there's like a pane with a calendar, a keep icon, and then tasks, which is the blue circle and the check mark. So the way that I use tasks and my other Google accounts much more populated with them is that I make different task lists for my different project buckets is I guess how I would word that. Um, and that's how my brain organizes things is like keeping things partitioned. So instead of having one big list, which is just the default my task list, I make these um, different lists and you can create, you know, you name it, whatever makes makes sense to you. If you ever need to rename it, delete it, anything like that, you can um, do that here. So the way you create, there's a bunch of different ways that you can create a task. And the way I'm, the, the next four options I'm going to show you will create tasks just for you. They're not visible to anyone else. Um, they're, and I'll get to how you assign them to other people in a moment. So you can add a task here. Oops, cheapers creepers. So in our, at my other organization, we always put the task. You can assign a due date. So I'll say, I'm gonna do this today. So ta-da, I have a task, it's due today. The other place I can make a task for myself is from my calendar. Oh, and look at that. The task I made for myself here, which also you can pull in from most of the Google apps, you can activate this pane. Um, so you can also click on Google Calendar, uh, click task, um, and then you can even add it to different task lists and you can give it a due date or not and then it shows up right here. You can also create them from your create button. Same thing. And the nice thing is, is wherever you create a task from, it populates into your My Task pane first, and then you can always move it somewhere else. So the other place you can there's two other places where you can you could make tasks, which is lovely. Um, one of them is from an email because you know someone sends you an email and they're like, I really need you to do this thing. And then all the documents you need are attached to that email. If you just click this, you're always looking for the circle and the check mark icon. You can click this, add to tasks. It will auto populate the email subject, but you can, whoops customize it. You can give it a due date if you want. And the nice thing about that is that even if I go to, you know, some other email or wherever, I can click on the task and the attached email and it brings me right back to that email um, where the task originated from, which is lovely. And the other handy dandy way you can make tasks are from chats. So if someone sends you a chat and they're like, I really need you to do this thing. Um, you go to the chat text and you click the three dots here hovering over it and you can click 
add to tasks. And then you can customize it. Um, so do the chat task. And again, it will, if you click on this, it will take you back to that original chat where you found it. And anytime you assign a due date to a task, it will populate. I usually do all day tasks. You can specify a specific time, but I find that those get lost in my other meetings and things like that. So I typically do all day tasks up here. Um, if you don't assign a due date, it won't populate in your Google Calendar, but all you can, you can just add one. Um, and the nice thing is, if I check it off here, it will check off in my calendar. If I check it off in my calendar, it will check off on my list. So it's just a really nice way to keep track of things. Um, and not let anything slip through the crack. And then if you ever accidentally mark a task as complete, you can come down to this completed pane and you just reopen it by clicking the X and it will, it'll repopulate. Um, it's, it's my favorite. It helps me a lot not forget things and stay on target with my due dates and things like that. Um, any questions about tasks? It is whatever the the single email thread is, is what gets added. Um, and you, the kind of, mm, you can attach files. Why? I don't know. I sure wish that was a thing, but what we like our workaround for files is, um, what we'll do is like, we'll go to the file, um, that the task is referring to we'll copy the share button link and then um I'm, i'll reopen this task and then usually what we do is paste the link in the details and at least that way you can get at the file that is being referred to um and clearly it will get a little messy if it's like multiple files so it's kind of unfortunate there's not a more elegant way to do that, but you can at least do that. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Good question. That there is, um, you can make them reoccurring similar to like how you would make a calendar event reoccurring. There's like a little icon with the circular arrows and you just click on that and it's it's the same settings as, um, as calendar events. You can do a custom one, you can do monthly, weekly, weekly on Thursdays. Um, you know, if it needs to be Thursdays at one, you can make it Thursdays at one. Um, and let me just actually show. So if you clicked on this and you click this little repeat, so here's where you can customize that. And then it will populate in your Google Calendar on that repeated um, schedule as well. Any other um, task questions? Okay, not hearing anyone. Um, so I will move on to spaces. And this is, uh, spaces are near and dear to my heart because they really cut down on our emails to each other. <laughs> 
it, at my other job, I, and I just like we were all like, can we not with all the silly emails? And and then the spaces helped us so much, so very much with that. So to ac you can access spaces from a couple different places. And let me so my personal preference is to go to the chat app and you on the left hand edge is where the spaces area exists you can also get to spaces from if you're in your gmail on the left hand edge and you you've turned on the new layout for gmail you can also get to spaces that way um, I just happen to have a personal preference to do it this way. And um, so spaces are basically chat rooms. And um, I'll show you my other account again real quick, just so you can see our spaces list. So we have like a communications team space, a Google workspace space where you can ask questions about Google or share tips you found. We have grant specific spaces, department specific spaces. This is my website space where we only talk about the website. Um, and we even have a water cooler space where we do a lot of things like share pictures and horse videos and cat things. And it's just lovely. Um, so we decided like with all of our teams, the teams get to decide if they think a space would be helpful. And if they do think it would be helpful, they anyone can create a space just by clicking this plus sign. You click create a space, you name it. Here's where you can invite people and again, um, you can also use that Google group email address to invite folks. And then um, you just wanna be careful about if it's going to be restricted um, just to people invited, or if you choose Noble, it, it's gonna be available to any of the other libraries too, which is probably not terrible, but you know you may not wanna do that. And then you just want to click this advanced box uh, to help keep the, the chat thread a little more organized. So this is my super lonely space that only I am a member of right now. And Lisa, I'm just going to, I'm just going to add you to it. I'll, I'll delete it later, <laughs> but just so there's someone else in here and I can demonstrate um, some of the features. So a couple of the awesome things about space. So it, it comes with a chat feed here. You can also, any anytime you share a file in a chat, you can do that um, by uploading, by attaching from Drive, or taking the share link from the share button and pasting it in. It will, it will populate in this files feed here, which is nice. And you can also just manually add files as well. Um, and this super cool thing. So this is a spaces task, which is just like the other tasks that I already showed you, but you can either assign it to yourself or you can assign it to anyone else who's a member of that space. So I'm just going to assign it to me for now. I'll put a due date of today. So it shows up in this task feed here, but it also populates in the chat feed and tags me. So I'm going to get a notification too. And then Google automatically dumps the space into my my task list and of course populates it on my Google calendar here. Um, the nice thing about 
using these tasks is that especially we use them for collaborative projects when you know someone has to do something by a certain date and as soon as they mark the task complete it it updates in the um the chat feed and shows that it's been done so the other people on the space will see like oh good carrie did the thing now i can do my part and you don't have to waste as much time you know letting people know that you're done you can move on it kind of automates that in a way so that's a neat feature and then the other little tidbit I'll show you before I stop for questions again is just um, tagging people. So you, if you need feedback from a specific person with a chat, you can at them. Um, or you can do, if there's a bunch of people on the space and you either need to alert them to something or you need everybody to know, you can say, Oh, well, it's not, you say at all, but for some reason it's not letting me do that. And it, that probably makes sense. It's like, there's not enough people in here for you to be in all you guys. So yeah, so you would just do at all and it will like ping everyone in the space and it's awesome. Um, and even though, this other feature right here isn't a spaces feature. I just wanted to touch on it. Um, in your chats here, which again, you can access through chat, or if you're in your Gmail, you can access it here. Um, you can add a Google Drive bot. And when you add it, what it does is anytime you're, um, someone shares a file with you or tags you in a comment or something like that, it just pulls all of that into a feed. So it's kind of a nice way, it's like a tool to help things not fall through the cracks. It's not like a silver bullet for saving files, but it can be really handy dandy. Um, and So it's a Google Drive bot. It's like a chat bot. And its function is to create a feed anytime someone shares a file with you or um, tags you in a comment in a Google Doc. Um, and it will populate in this feed, in the Google Drive feed. So it's not actually Google Drive. It's just an activity feed, I guess might be a good way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, like normally someone shares something with you, you get an email about it. And I, those emails I just immediately delete. because so I'm like, great, I got it. It's clogging my inbox. But that same um, like information that came in through that email also populates in this Google Drive bot chat feed, which is nice. Um, okay, um, yeah, questions about spaces or things like that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you know what? That's a really good question. I'm not sure I've ever assigned a task to someone who's not on a space. So this is one of those circumstances where I'd be like, let's run an experiment and see, and see what happens because I don't actually know. I mean, I would assume you would want them to be on the space. Um, and at, at my other organization, so like basically the way we use spaces was like, you would always put the task in the space it was most related to. 
but you would want to make sure that the person receiving the task was on that space as well. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry I can't answer that, but we could run an experiment next time I'm at work. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, that's a really good question. And what I am, what I think at my other organization we did well was had those conversations as teams to be like, all right, how are we going to agree to use this together? And some of the general things that we came up with was, um, Everyone is expected to catch up on their chat and their space chat feeds twice a day. We all agreed that anything urgent or emergency related didn't belong <laughs> in a chat space, like there was gonna be a better way to communicate that. But we all also agreed that like, if it didn't have to be an email and it could be a chat, like make it be a chat. So it took us, a while to kind of hit an equilibrium with that where people were participating in conversations um and like what i've noticed over time is i mean we have probably 15 different spaces and depending on what's happening in the different projects they'll be really active or really quiet and then you just kind of catch up um but it is, I mean, you're right, it is just another, it's another feed to check, so there's that. Um, and we had to really teach people about how to set their notifications to their tolerance for being interrupted. Like, I get zero chat notifications because of work, like my brain will short circuit. <laughs> but some people love the ding and they love the pop-up, so like, we really, for the people who got really frustrated with chats, we had to be like, you can turn those off, you know, like you don't, so it, yeah, I mean, it, it did help to reduce our like little back and forth emails and it did help open up some conversations where like, for example, Maybe normally I'd only email three people about it, but if I put it in a space that has 15 employees, you know, 10 of those people maybe are gonna have an idea that the three people I were gonna email, they wouldn't have even thought of it. So we're getting a little bit more creativity in some of our discussions, online discussions together, which, which is nice, but it is certainly another feed, yeah. Um, okay, any other, I want to do like a time, I, I want to do a time check. So it's 2.46. I usually notice when I'm doing tech stuff with people, their eyes roll back in their head at about the 35 minute mark. So I'm wondering, maybe I'll save the Gmail gems and the drive me crazy portions of the training I'll record them after the after we wrap this up and then you can watch them at, at your leisure um and I would be happy to answer questions about those things as well but I just want to be respectful of people's time and brain power and not cramming too much google down your down your you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> does that sound like a pretty good plan? 
Okay, cool. But I would love to like just open up the last, you know, few minutes of any questions or like impressions or I don't know, just things that were like, hmm, that might be neat if we started to use that or I don't know. I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we we were I'll just talk a little bit about what we like how we went through what we just went through because it was I mean, we're just now 18 months later at the point where everyone is proficient and we're all on the same page, but it it was 18 months and we were using the the like uh um what's the word analogy or whatever um, that might not be the right word of we're the big container ship in the Suez Suez Canal and we're we're trying to turn just a little bit you know we're a huge ship it's a whole organization we're trying to make this change but we don't want to get like stuck in the canal and ruin everything so we that's what we were like how do we kind of turn this ship slowly and not leave anyone behind so we started by asking First of all, who was inherently interested in this type of work? Because some people love Google organizational pro productivity stuff and some people do not. So we kind of polled everyone to see who was just interested by default and then also suggested to a couple people who maybe should really participate to make it easier on them as we did start to implement things. Um, and then like the executive director wanted to be involved. So like there was definitely like a head of department team aspect where certain people had to be involved. So we sort of started with that ask. Um, we made our team, we polled people and we were like, what are your pain points? You know, like, what are you getting frustrated with? There was a lot of email stuff. There was a lot of, I can't find any files ever. You know, like if I'm working on stuff with other people, like, where are you putting those things? You know, I can never find them. So we got all those pain points and kind of created this plan of it was like a multifaceted, a multifaceted plan. Um, it involved identifying our different teams, like which teams we had. Some were program teams, some were grant teams, some were department teams, you know. Um, we identified the list of questions that each team should run through, sort of like, do we need a team calendar? Do we need a space? If yes, why? How do we wanna use it? And every team kind of ran through that list of questions together. So we developed a common agreement and understanding of how we were going to use these things um we we also implemented i did like monthly one-on-one -on -one support sessions with people to help them individually with what they were getting tripped up on we built into all of our team agenda blocks like five minutes to talk about google stuff to be like i reorganized this folder here's where it lives like you might want to know that kind of a thing um and then we have a quarterly all staff Google Workspace meeting where we get together and we say like, all right, how's it going? What are we still having pain points with? Does anyone want to suggest, you know, like a new project or a new tool or something like that? Um, like we're really getting into using Google sites for different things, which has been really helpful. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, we tried to make it as holistic of an approach as possible. And it really did take, for about nine months, we were in the it's worse before it got better phase. 
And then at about a year, we were all kind of like, ooh, okay, like we, we, we're doing this. Like we're, if this is working. And now it's, we're at the point where we're kind of going back to the whole organization to be like, all right, how, you know, we've hit a new level. Now, where do we go from here? So we, we've tried to make it as, I don't know. Yeah, as holistic as possible, I guess. That was really long-winded, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it was a lot, but very much worth it oh, once on the other side of it. Yeah. Cool. Well, oh, yeah, Ona, go ahead. What? What was that? I'm not sure what's happening. Can I, are you talking, Ona? Are you trying to talk? We can't hear you. I can't hear you, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ona, we can't hear you. <laughs> Oh, look, there's a bubble in the chat, too. I've probably been neglecting that for a long time. Oh, thanks, Katie. That's nice. Okay, I'm going to keep an eye out for that. Oh. Oh, I, Ona, I am going to talk about drive, but I did the thing where I tried to pack too much into too little time. So I'm going to record that stuff after we wrap this up. I'll just record a separate trading thing and post it and share it out. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, that would, that is great. If you all are supportive of that, I'm more than happy to do that. And then we can just talk dates and stuff and I can certainly post this one, um, you know, shortly. Yay. Okay, cool. Yay. Well, thank you all for coming. <laughs> I appreciate, I appreciate you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, everyone. We'll see you around.